right, for this project, we are going to be using and reviewing the Magnum Project Painter Plus. It does not have a model number. It's just called the Magnum Project Painter Plus. Uh, I got this on uh, at a Lowe's. I, I got this at Lowe's for around 250 bucks. I used gift cards that I had been stockpiling from um, events and holidays and things like that for, for a while now. So I, I treated myself to this power sprayer. It is an airless sprayer. Um, it, let's see, let's see a couple of things that it tells us. It includes a 25 foot hose. I've already unpacked some of these items. Uh, includes a 25 foot hose, a spray gun with in-handle filter, an airless spray tip for paint, and it advertises that it can handle all types of paint. I'm going to be using a Sherwin-Williams HGTV um, flat sealing paint. It is latex based. I haven't thinned it. I want to see how it works without thinning it. Also comes with a bottle of pump armor storage fluid so that it doesn't um, damage your equipment while it's in storage, not being used. And of course, instructions and a startup guide. I have already unboxed this. Here is the unit itself. Not very big, handheld, portable. Comes with that 25 foot hose like I mentioned. This is our spray gun. Has a lock feature for the handle so you can lock the trigger so it doesn't go, go off by mistake. It has the, uh, the valve up top. One side is for painting and the other side is for clogs. This bright orange thing is the trigger spray guard. It's got a little hook here for uh, storage. It's also got a storage unit right here in the base. So while it's not being used, it can be stored away neatly. Same thing with the suction hose. The suction hose has a filter so you don't suck up extra debris. And it also has a storage unit here so that it's a drip collector. Uh, a couple of things worth mentioning on the unit itself. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. <coughs> Some key controls from the quick startup guide. I've already read, read the manual, so I'm gonna be using this for our first go. Uh, it also comes with a cleaning adapter, which we'll use at the end. That stores right here, I believe. Yep. And the controls, this has an on off switch. It's in off prior to setup. This is our pressure control knob, right for more pressure, left for less. I'm gonna set this all the way to the lowest pressure setting per the instructions for the quick startup. It also has a connector here for the gun. I already went ahead and connected that and used a wrench to just give it a little bit of a tighten without going crazy on it. And finally, I have my two suction tubes, which I still need to install. One is already hooked up. This one looks like it came loose. Hopefully that's not gonna give me a problem, but I'm gonna flip this. And hook up this last tube. Now that we have all of our tubes hooked up, I think we can separate our tubes here. Maybe it'll tell me otherwise. And it tells us to plug our sprayer in. Little orange light on the cord tells us it's plugged in. That's kind of cool. And separate the drain tube from the suction tube. Ah, we did that, so we were ahead of the game. Then it tells us to place the drain tube, the smaller one, into a waste pail. We have the waste pail, which I'm sitting on. So you need two buckets for this, plus your paint. Fortunately, I have one because I'm sitting on it. So I've got my waste pail here. Drop that right in. And submerge suction tube into pailed 
filled with water for water-based material or mineral spirits if spraying oil-based material. So we are using a latex paint, which means that we can go with a, uh, a water. We don't need the mineral spirits. Since latex paint is oil water-based. All right, take my second hose. That goes into the water. I might have to weigh that down or force it down just to make sure it stays in the water because this wants to spring back up on me. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think we'll be okay. All right, then lift the prime spray valve to the prime position. Up is for prime. This model does not have a priming button, so it tells us to just go ahead and fire it up for about 30 to 60 seconds. Let's see how loud this is. And then after that time goes, we turn it off. Here we go. Well, that's not good. Now, turn pressure control to start. See, this is why we do this together. Start. There we go. All right, 30 seconds. Turn that off. We are in unclog. We are in the waste bucket. Lower prime spray valve to spray. Turn power switch on. Oh, it didn't like that. Ah, that's spray. I had to fiddle with those quick start instructions a little bit. I wasn't perfectly clear on what they were trying to tell me. Um, however, I do have it figured out now. Only took me about an extra 45 seconds. I didn't want to look stupid on camera for that long, so I just turned it off, turned it back on. We are good to go. I don't feel completely stupid. I'm gonna put my protective gear on and I'm gonna start by spraying this top corner here, which is out of sight. Nice little spot to uh, run my test. So let me put my safety gear on and you can see how this thing performs. Let's do it. Okay, so let's get some initial reactions here. Um, I've never used one of these before, and you probably heard it was like sputtering. It wasn't quite like a running engine sound. I don't know if that is normal or not, so I'm gonna do a little research on that, but it seems to be spraying okay. But what you will notice is it is, it is definitely dripping, and when I tried to change the settings to like a finer mist, it doesn't seem to wanna do that for me. So I'm gonna to have to troubleshoot this a little bit. I don't like that it's dripping so much. That's gonna leave a very um, messy finish and I can't have that. So um, all in all though, it has been pretty easy to use once I figure out how to get uh, more of a mist than a, than a, a, a true pour, um, I think I'll be good to go. So I'm gonna do a little troubleshooting and I will check back in with you in a little bit once I got this thing running smooth, so stay tuned.
So I got it figured out. The problem was that the pressure wasn't high enough. So you'll see a difference now. The, the mist is actually finer and uh, it's, it's much better once I turned it up, not down. So pressure down means drips, pressure up means more spray, more blast. So watch this last section and um, that should do it for this little how-to and then I'll do a cleanup. Okay, watch this. All right, so I am going to take a break now because this is only supposed to be a trial run. This isn't supposed to be a full painting operation. You can see already the difference that the sprayer has made. And you can also probably tell that this is, this is hours of brush painting right here done in about 15 minutes. So this is gonna be a huge time saver. I'm still gonna have a little bit of a learning curve with this. Um, I got to teach myself that um, it's better to spray a little now and a little later, get that even coverage, let it dry, because I am getting a little bit of dripping right now, nothing I can't fix, um, but I, I don't want that. And of course, that is why I started with this back corner first, because it's the least visible. So I'm going to go through with the cleanup now and see how difficult that process is. And I'm going to come back another day, tape up these lights and uh, make sure and my windows make sure that there's nothing that i don't want to get covered in paint um although i am going to paint the canisters themselves just not the the fixtures and the uh, electrical and uh we'll come back to this another day so sorry about the uh, the motion i'm having a hard time holding this with my gross painty hand um so let's go do some quick cleanup and we'll continue with this project all right so outside we go all right, so there's a whole bunch of parts to clean up and it starts with just your regular garden hose. Take any nozzle or spray gun that you have off and use this attachment that they provide and make sure that the valve is closed. So now you can just use this as your, as your nozzle. Um, this is gonna attach to both tubes and it's also just gonna help in cleaning up the little parts. All right, so here's the mistake I made. I disassembled the tubes prematurely. They've got to stay on during the cleanup process. It's also important to mention that you are going to need access to a garden hose and an outlet to complete the cleanup process. So get your extension cords ready if you don't have those nearby. So my next step is <clears throat> I've got my garden hose with my valve attachment hooked up to the pump hose, the big one and I'm going to turn that on and power the, the switch on as well. So I'm gonna power on, turn on my water, let that run, and that's coming through the drain hose as well as my suction hose. And once again, when that turns white, or when that stops being white, we're done. Right now it's still a little milky. Give it a few more seconds. It looks like most of our dirt is on the outside now. So I think we are clean in both hoses now. You can also see that this wasn't in the drain bucket but needs to be. 
because this is now cleaning out water as well, cleaning off paint as well. I've got pure water running through all three hoses. That means we are done. It also recommends that you clean off your uh, handheld items like your nozzle and your uh, trigger um, with a brush. I'm going to do that off camera. You don't have to watch me scrub clean those. But I'm going to turn this off real quick and do a quick uh, follow up. Okay, so that is it for this review of the Magnum Project Painter Plus airless sprayer. Using it was pretty easy. Obviously, I had a bit of a learning curve. I'm still getting used to it. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it after just a couple of hours of playing with it. Um, cleanup was a breeze. I took all the tools. I even got this little uh, nylon brush that I had sitting around in the drawer that I never use. I'm just going to keep this here specifically for this tool. Uh, cleaned up my parts all nice and good. Let them dry out. And I put them back in their little holders so everything is nice and conveniently located where where it should be um, I think that this thing is going to be a huge time saver for one thing and also this is going to be a big money saver if you have to hire a painter for a big job you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars this thing cost me about 250 somewhere in that neighborhood and it's going to save me a lot of time and a lot of money can't wait to use it again on the rest of this project I'm going to keep you posted on anything major that I do. I got some carpet to install. I got some walls that need to go up. So anything that um, I feel is important to this uh, reno, I will film it and hopefully give you some tips and pointers. I'm not a pro. I'm just working my way through this, trying to save some money, make a nice uh, usable space for the family to enjoy. So if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you have, thanks for tuning in again. And I will see you next time, maybe in the shop, maybe in the basement. We'll see. Take care, everybody.